in the land of road bikes and certainly bikes in general, what's in front of us here today might be considered a endangered species in the land of bicycles. And in fact, even more so because it's a road bike. That's right, in front of us is a specialized Allay Sport, which still utilizes rim brakes and in this video we're going to talk about why that might still be compelling in 2023 but also what do i think about the future of this type of bike and where specialized might be heading with it starting off with the specialized delay this bike is absolutely gorgeous in this nice green and cash money gold color it's a uh, quite a looker and in fact, I should mention from the get-go, even though we're taking a look at this in 2023, this is in fact a 2022 model. This is the last colorway and variant that shows up as in stock on Specialized. And I wonder what the future is going to hold for it because it is a bit of a dying breed. And that's because this bike runs rim brakes. And before we get too far into it, let's just talk a little bit about what this type of bike is. And in fact, it's what's considered a beginner road bike. Now in the specialized lineup, the Allay starts off their road bike series as a dedicated road riding machine for somebody who's looking for a bike to get into road riding, an affordable way to go racing, or even somebody that's signing up for their first triathlon or charity ride. And this bike here, being the sport level, slots in right in the middle of the basic specialized delays. They have an Elite above it that's about $1,700, and then below it, for about $1,000, they have their standard Allay. And this being the sport model is $1,400, comes with a 2x9 drivetrain, some decent, good quality wheels, and a nice aluminum frame. Now, these Allays have set themselves off compared to some of the other beginner road bikes because this is not a straight endurance bike. And by that I mean a lot of endurance bikes or a lot of beginner bikes are endurance bikes, which means that the front end of the bike is relatively tall and upright to help make it more comfortable. And then the wheelbase is lengthened and the front end slackened a bit so that the bike is more stable. But part of that stability sometimes takes away the fun and the enjoyment of a snappy, fast handling road bike and specialized on their LA models has mixed in some of the more sporty geometry while still keeping the bike reasonably upright. And as you go up in the range above this standard LA, they also have what they call an LA Sprint, which is an all out race bike with the geometry like their top end tarmac race carbon bike. But this one here gets some of its performance from the E5 butted aluminum, which means that this is shaped and butted tubing internal cable routing and in fact stays as the last bike in their lineup with rim brakes and rim brakes are these calipers that go around the rim here and as you grab the brake that's what's grabbing onto the braking surface to slow the bike down now in a lot of cases on road bikes today they have all gone to disc brakes and a disc brake is where instead of the brakes up top it's down in the center of the wheel and that provides a couple of benefits. First off, for obvious reasons, you can't go to an unlimited tire size because the tire still needs to go inside of that brake. It also means that when you're braking, you're actually wearing on the rim. Uh, and these rims over time, believe it or not, can get cupped and worn out from braking. Now, a lot of light users will never see that in their lifetime. However, I've seen it all the time with bikes that have come in for service that have that cupped surface, which requires a really big expense to maintain the bike because you have to replace the wheel or at least the rim. And so when they go down to those disc brakes, the disc brake adds a lot of capability in bad weather such as rain because the disc isn't going through the puddles and getting wet, but it also allows for easier serviceability, greater stopping power in most cases, especially when hydraulic and it doesn't wear any of the mechanical systems. The downside to that, 
Of course, with every benefit comes costs, and one of those is just the overall cost of bikes. In the last several years, you've seen the more basic group sets get more expensive as they've added hydraulic disc brakes, and that's simply because the braking system is just much more expensive to create and build than these older style traditional calipers. The other piece is the bikes tend to come in quite a bit heavier. There's more mechanical pieces to it, more going on, and that affects the overall weight. So even in 2023, a bike like this can be super compelling because at $1,400, you're getting a decent build kit on the bike, a really nice frame, and you'll see at the end, compared to other bikes in this price range, this is incredibly light. And thinking about the future, one thing that I really wonder about is currently Specialized does not have any new Allays listed in a 2023 variant. This being a 2022 model, they are still selling these currently, but I suspect as stock and things like that run out, it'll be interesting to know what they do in the future. My bet is this bike goes to disc brakes because the market is demanding it. And then I also wonder if it's also gonna go down the track of getting greater tire clearance. Now, speaking of the exact specs on this bike, this aluminum frame gets connected to the front end via a carbon fiber fork. That carbon fork is gonna lower some weight. It's also gonna reduce some of the vibrations that come up through the bike to the handlebar. And that's because a carbon fork ends up absorbing those vibrations as an organic material. Think of it like when you drop a piece of wood onto the ground, it kind of thuds, makes a noise. But if you were to do the same with a hollow pipe, it would ring for a little while. And then out back, the bike is set up where you can run rear racks. It has mounts on both the front as well as the back for fenders, which is nice. And you do have down tube and seat tube water bottle mounts with this nice divorced top tube to seat stay junction. Part of why they do that where this is divorced allows the back end to have a little bit of additional flex. Although this bike is set up with an alloy seat post and would be a place that I'd love to see a carbon seat post as your first upgrade for similar vibration absorption, just like the fork on the front end. Now the shifting is done out back courtesy of some Shimano Sora drivetrain. Now this Sora rear derailleur shifts through an 11 to 34 cassette, which is a nine speed drivetrain out back, but a nice wide range. And then that goes forward to a Shimano Sora front derailleur shifting on a Praxis Alba crank set. Now the Praxis Alba crank sets are one of the rare places where I'm actually happy to see a different brand crank than the rest of the drivetrain. In most cases, having the drivetrain match with the crank and all the parts end up giving it the best shifting and riding performance. However, here, Praxis makes some pretty good quality chain rings, and they're one of the few that can shift as good or better than their Shimano counterparts. But this is a 50 tooth to a 34 tooth. So with the 34 and 34 out back, that means we have a one to one low ratio which should give this bike quite a bit of climbing capability. Now, of course, connecting the bike to the road is via some 700 by 25C road sport tires from Specialized. These road sport tires are a wire bead setup, definitely a place where you could have an upgrade in the future, but is an affordable way to get pedaling. And this bike should be able to take a 28C tire pretty comfortably. Now up on the handlebar, is a five position alloy bar. So you've got your position right on the tops. You've got it on the corner, out onto the hoods, which is where most people ride for the majority of the time. You've got down here in the drops where you've got good connection to the brake and the shifting of the bike. And then of course, that sprint position down low where you can grab at the bottom and really be able to torque the bars as you're climbing to the top of the climb or getting to that town line sprint. Now that alloy handlebar connects to the fork via an aluminum stem. And then out back is the specialized bridge saddle mounted up on that alloy seat post. Well, now that we've taken a look at all of the features and designs of this bike, as well as we've gotten a chance to talk about what the future might have in hold for it, let's go ahead and find out what this bike weighs. This Alay Sport in a size 56 
comes in and weighs 20.66 pounds.